What's up guys, Gims here and welcome back to Pro Cycling Matter 2023 for episode number 68 of the Quantas Um In today's episode, we shall have some more mountains with the final episode of the Giro d'Italia. Uh, if you've missed the previous two episodes, go ahead and check them out, especially the last one. Um, but yeah, some uh, hills today, three mountain stages and also a 20 uh, second deficit on Remco Evenepoel, but also a 30 kilometer time trial. Hopefully, we can make it work. In this stage, to kick off uh, this episode between Tolmezzo and Tolmezzo, I'll be honest, most of my riders, despite having plus fives, which I'm very happy with what I'm seeing on the left-hand side of the screen here, um, they're all very tired. So I think today, it's, I'm going to give them a day off. I think today, to the exception of Ethan Stone, who's going to go in the breakaway, just because it's Ethan Stone and, and well, I mean, that's, the, that's his job. Um... Most of my riders are tied, so unless the peloton does some mental stuff today, which to be fair they could because it's BCM, uh, if they don't do something completely crazy, today is going to be a day off for them. I want them to recover, heading into uh, the more important mountain stages in the near future. There's a real fight for the stage. Um, I thought the breakaway had it. Now I'm not so sure. A break of three. James Knox, Jonas Gregor, Leo Bizio. Ethan was a part of that breakaway and then he collapsed, uh, which makes sense. He's, he's, had a, he's, had a, he's run a great Giro so far, the poor guy. Can't, can't fault him for, uh, for his efforts. 40 seconds for the lead break. If I stop pacing, what happens? They stop pacing. Okay. We'll go with the solid 84 rhythm, but I think the win is right here. And they've stopped pacing, meaning that I can launch this sprint. Ah, oh, no, they, they've anticipated. Lorenzo Rota did anticipate the sprint. No flamme rouge either way. The win today is for Jao Almeida. Big ups Portugal. At least I'm going to get some views on this video. Get in. We've recovered following yesterday's stage. Uh, we're not in very bad fitness. We're now in good for Arturo and mediocre for the others. And it's a good thing because today we've got 222 kilometers of mayhem between Longarone and Cortina d'Ampezzo. Paso Giao, Paso Fedaya, Paso, Paso Sea, Paso Gardena, Ivan Paso, any kind of Paso, we've got all of them today. This is make or break. This is the queen stage. But at the end, there will be one king and hopefully he's Irish. I have bad news. And they come from Nick Schultz, who's out of the race following a crash. Uh, a crash also involved Finley Tarling, who's trying to come back in the peloton, but he's struggling to do so. And that means that with 140 kilometers remaining, we've only got four riders in the main peloton. We're nearing the halfway mark. We've actually just gone across the halfway mark. I'm scared. I am petrified. I've got two riders left. And I've got five more climbs to go, including the Paso Giao and the Paso Fedaya. And I'm very, very soon going to have Archie Ryan and Max Ball. Why the fuck did Nick have to withdraw, man? Why? I'm very surprised by the amount of crashes. Like, this is potentially the 50th or 50... Maybe 60th crash I've had throughout this stage. Um, I did not change the crash ratio. I think it's still, like, 1.4, 1.5. It's, it's... It's... Crazy. It's just crazy. Uh, Hugh Carthy is in the breakaway, despite having zero RPM. Um, RPM? BPM, sorry. Uh, then we've got... Uh, you've just crashed! Pierre Gautrin and Zoran Kralmerson literally crashed in a row. Schachmann is crashing now in A7. I'm, uh, everyone's crashing. You get a crash, everyone get a crash. But we're starting the Paso Fedaya, 61 kilometers remaining. Remco still has at least three teammates, potentially more. Make that four here. Uh, yeah, basically I'm the team with the least amount of riders. I think my main... Scare here is that I don't have enough energy to put proper gaps because I can't pace now, obviously, because I don't have enough riders. But I need to do something because in the Daniel portion, obviously, Archer is going to do fuck all. Uh, Remco is better than me, but I mean, not really. It depends on his uh, on his fitness. <sighs> I need to gain like twenty two seconds. I can gain. I I gen I, that I can do. But more than three minutes? Not so sure. Roman Valle just crashed. Oh, shocking stats for Roman. Poor guy. Oh, and pacing works. Pacing has worked. Archie Ryan on his own. Five to go until the summit of the Paso Jao. Max is dead. Max is going to get co-op by this group where Thomas Glug is attacking. 
Remco Evenepoel relying on Jan Hert. I'm not sure that's the wisest of decisions as Archie Ryan um, catches, sorry, Hugh Carthy. I'm going to reduce the rhythm a bit. One minute on Thomas Glug, another minute on this group. Remco's dead. Remco's dead. Remco is finished. Remco is finito. Finito, people, for Remco Evenepoel. All right, Hugh Carthy, brother, you are a worse downhiller than me. Please don't crash. If he crashes in the Daniel portion, I'm fucked. I'll use the gel so I can make the summit. The gap is increasing by the second. Remco Evenepoel is literally in, is in perdition. Remco Evenepoel is dying. Hugh Carthy has attacked me. Prick. This may be the Giro. This right here may be the moment the Giro is being played out. Let's go 99 in the Daniel portion with Archie Ryan. Hopefully Max can do the same. I'm with Rem Kovenepoel, with Max Paul, so there's no need for me to pace as Jan Hert has a puncture. Although I'm pretty sure that if I pace, I'm pretty much convinced I can drop Rem Kovenepoel. And that could be the best situation for me. Archie Ryan, Hugh Carthy, they're both shit in downhill. Let's attack in this flatter-ish portion here to try and drop the uh, the British rider. We've, we didn't drop him, but we've done... All right, I guess. We have dropped Rem Kovenepoel. That is quite good. We'll attack once more in this flatter portion. Trying to properly drop and ruin the, the, the mental aspect. Archie Ryan versus Hugh Carthy for the win in Cortina d'Ampezzo. 900 meters to go. Archie Ryan on his way for a back-to-back. -back. Archie Ryan on his way to Maglia Rossa. It's a win. In Cortina d'Ampezzo, for Archie Ryan, ahead of you, Carthy, Thomas Glug with a remarkable performance, and I'm pretty sure Thomas Glug may potentially gain P2. Max Paul is going to lose big today, but believe me, he's done so much more than losing some time. Uh, he may lose the white jersey at this rate, but that's fine. What a performance by Archie Ryan and Cortina d'Ampezzo. What a work by the team. <sighs> and we are the new Maglia Rosa. 4.22 is our lead on Remco Evenepoel for the stage, so the gap should be 4 minutes and 10 seconds. GC wise, it is indeed. Max Paul, 9.54 in P4. This is ridiculous, uh, but we're here. We out here. Six riders, but positive race days all around. Plus one for Archie Ryan in this mountain stage between Cavalese and Trento. It's a good thing that there's a no um, summit finish, because I would have struggled. Monte Bondone, not once, but twice. Cool! Cool. Plus five for uh, Max Paul as well. We love to see it. Plus five for Rafferty, C for Finley Tarlin. It's a great day. It's a great day, but mostly look at this. Look at this. Wait, that's uh, that's the wrong rider. Look at this. With the pink bike as well. It's get out of the way, Sky Rider. This is just lovely. Um, we've done both ascensions of the Monte Bondone and. Uh, Everything is all good. No attacks from the peloton. We do have a breakaway of two riders in the lead. Matteo Jorgensen and Mikel Landa. I'm hoping for a Spanish win because free Landa. And also Landismo and also... Uh, I don't know, I like Mikel Landa. Uh, the breakaway... Yeah, this group is not coming back. Then again, there is still 30 kilometers of valley as you got. He's coming back with Egan Bernal. And I, do would I would like to see Egan Bernal win. Um, we do have a bit of a hill here, so I'll make sure not to uh, do anything too crazy with the peloton. Hopefully Darren can come back as well, alongside the entirety of Team Sky. Uh, if Darren can come back, that's good. If not, that, that, then so be it. I'm going to do something. I'm going to attack with Max Paul. Uh, just so I can gain some, some seconds on... Um, what's his name? Oh, I forgot to... I attacked, but I forgot to pace after that. Fuck's sake, Guillaume, you're dumb. DM was to gain time on Jan Christy. Oh, Jan Christen, sorry. But uh, yeah, I forgot. I'll attack once more. And it's not working. It's fine. Valentin Madras is the one following me. The win today is for Matteo Jorgensen, who defeats Egan Bernal, Hugh Garty, and Mikel Landa. I'm a bit disappointed, but that's fine. I'm used to it. Uh, Darren Rafferty is going to pace for Archie Ryan, who himself is in the wheel of someone else. That's all good. No worries whatsoever in this finish in Trento. Four stages left, and we are still in the Maglia Rosa of leader of this Giro d'Italia. Honestly, screenshot this. Uh, plus fives all around. It's lit literally everyone has a plus five. <laughs> um, it's a shame that it's a state where nothing's gonna happen. But I love it. I love the commitment. We we cannot lose this Giro. 
I'm trying to, to get my karma to butt me in the ass so that we can have a, a tricky finish. But did not expect this race to take this turn. Uh, okay, now they're gonna bridge. Surely Remy Kamenia is gonna sprint because uh, we had a group of 36 riders. Okay, cool, now they're, they're, they're gonna come back. Uh, meanwhile, speaking of comeback, I'd love to come back on the breakaway. But that seems to be too difficult for Darren Rafferty and Ethan Stone. Crash, Archie Ryan. Archie Ryan is crashed. See what I said about provoking my karma so they'd bite me in the ass? That's exactly what I meant. Oh, and now they're sprinting. Oh, yeah, 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 of course, because Heli Hansen really needs to pace. Bellens. Took some time, but we're back. Finley Tarling, Ethan Stone, and Matthew Bostock doing the Lord's work. I'm gonna let the breakaway win, because I do not give a shit at all about the breakaway with Jonas Gregor, Valentin Madras, and Hugh Carthy. Uh, some riders are bridging to this group, that's fine. Um, I just don't want to spend any energy. Who's this? Ben O'Connor and Wolf Art? No, Van Vilda and Tim Lawrence, man. Don't care. As long as Max and Archie follow everyone here, we will be good to go. Win for you, Carthy. Uh, oh, they sprinted. Shit. Uh, let's go, Archie. Where's Remco Venable? That's the only one I need to worry about. That's fine, I'm next to him. Good. Alright. More mountains coming up. That is the final mountain stage of the Giro d'Italia between Livigno and Mortirolo. We start with the Paso di Foscagno, Paso Gavia, Paso di Santa Cristina and the climb towards Mortirolo. If we have more than five minutes at the end of this stage, I think I can say with certainty that I've won this Giro d'Italia. Okay, what the fuck? Hold up. I, I was pacing with Matthew Bostock and Ethan Stone, and they dropped Max Paul and Archie Ryan. Why? And also, how? Right, Hanna, and here we go. Paso del Mortirolo. Um, it's not an easy climb, it's, it's not a short climb either. So I need to pay attention to what I do. I'll slow down Archie Ryan at the very beginning, because I don't want him to lead. 5.55, sorry, 6 minutes for the breakaway, they should be fine. Uh, I'd rather have Max Paul ahead of Archie, if possible. Matthew Bostock is still here. Matthew Bostock is spaced during the entire Paso de Gavia. I don't think people understand how mental uh, that is. Ah, interesting, uh, Max Paul dropped everyone by just spacing 75. I'll attack with Archie Ryan. Oh, I think I think everyone's dead in the peloton. I think, I think everyone's dead in the peloton. I've never seen this, but nobody's pacing. Lopez, what, what's going on? Miguel Angel Lopez refuses to pace. What? No, because this is, this is mental. Miguel Angel Lopez refuses to pace. They're, they're doing a blockade. What? Wait, 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 no, but that makes no sense. Because Ethan Stone is staying in this group, so believe me, they are not pacing. There's four minutes between... What the fuck? What? Wait, th but they're acting as the groupetto. Well, if I hadn't won the, the, the Giro now, well, yet, yeah, now I know I have won it. Um, so th this group is acting like the groupetto. They are just doing groupetto stuff. It's a win at the Mortirolo for Valentin Madouas, ahead of Jack Haig. Archie Ryan will finish in the top 10, uh, maybe not on the podium because I have no energy. <sighs> what the fuck went on? Oh, and now they decide to pace? Max Paul, uh, sorry, Max Paul's gonna be P2 at this point. Max Paul is gonna be P2 of the, of the jar. This is one of the weirdest things I've, I've, I've seen ever. The peloton is 10 minutes behind. Actually, no, more than that. The peloton is going to lose, yeah, 10 minutes. I guess we'll have a battle in the final stage between Max Paul and Remco Venepol to know who's going to be P3. Uh, this, this made no sense. The peloton finished around P18, 10 minutes behind. It's a good thing I paced with Archie Ryan and Max Paul. It really is. Sprint stage to uh, get our minds clear after yesterday's shenanigans. Bergamo, Monza. All right. We're entering Monza for the final five kilometers. Into Curva Grande we go. I actually don't know which corner we are right now. Don't know where, where we entered. Uh, could this be the Lesmo? 
Oh look. Could this be Lesmo 1 and 2? Are we gonna have a long uh, raid a road sorry towards Ascari? I don't know. Archie, I know you're not a sprinter, but I need you to do better. No, Darren Raffitz, yeah, for, uh, okay, we died. It's it's fine, I didn't want to sprint either way. Um, the win, as we have a very sharp corner here. This is a dangerous sprint. It's a win for Jasper Philipson, but this is a dangerous corner. I'm sorry, this, I don't think this is, this is, this is good. Can I see, like, a helicopter view? Like, a, a proper helicopter view to know which corner this is? Okay, so that's, that's... Uh, Parabolica. Okay. Gotcha. So that was turn one. Let's move on to... Okay. That, that's Ascari right there. And we're on the way for a final time in this Giro d'Italia here in Milano. Uh, we start, I believe, in Monza, if I'm being honest. Yeah, once again, that is the Monza circuit. I'm not going to do a track guide just like I did previously. Darren Raffetti and Ethan Stone are having good days in this um, this time trial, a plus four for Darren, which puts him at 80 time trial, but he's already 29 seconds down on Remy Cavagna, the first unit, actually on Filippo Ganna. But it is Remy, the French rider, leading in Milano. We'll see if I can do uh, any better in the second and third part of the time trial. And across the line for Darren Raffetti, 44 seconds down. Uh, both him and Ethan Stone completely collapsed at the end. But P5 nonetheless, as Max Paul begins his efforts in 14 positions, 3 seconds, sorry, 4 seconds on Remco Venepol, and there's a potential 1-2 in the GC for Qantas, but I don't see it happening. At least it's a good day for Max Paul. At least it's a good day. Allez, Max. He'll be in white, that's for sure. Can he be P2? I don't know. Completely fucked the end of the time trial with, um, with Max. But that's fine, it's not like Thomas Glock was of any danger, GC-wise. Thomas, sorry, Max Paul 148 down, Remco Venepol P2 11 seconds behind. How much would have I lost with Archie Ryan? That is the question. I had like, what, 4 minutes before the, 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 the mayhem that happened on, um, on stage 19 on the Mortirolo. Would have 4 minutes been enough? Yep, 3 or 4. Archie Ryan wins the Giro, I mean, Remy Cavagna wins the stage in Milano ahead of Remco Venepol and Pilipo Ghana. But for the first time this year, for the first time in this save, we have won a Grand Tour. Archie Ryan wins the Giro, did I win the Vuelta last year? Can't remember. It's my first time winning the Giro, at least that's for sure, ahead of Remco Venepol and Max Paul in P3. Glug, Christen, Sivako, Farensman, Almeida, Dan Martinez, and Adam Yates to wrap up the top 10 as Hugh Carthy is the best climber by a huge margin of 120 points over Adam Yates, 130 points actually. Uh, Leo Bizu in P4, the, the, the hero of this Giro winning every time. Points wise, Jordi Meus makes it a 1 2 for Belgium as he wins the Chiclamino jersey. Leo Bizu in P3, big ups. Max Paul is the best young rider. The best team goes to Team Sky following all of the deaths that happen in Qantas. Alright, I checked and uh, Edith and Bar had won La Vuelta last year. Um, but it is by far my first Giro, that is for sure. And that's perfect to wrap up the episode. In the next one, we will have the... Uh... Do I want to do the Dauphiné? <laughs> It's the classic version of the Dauphiné, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, I'll do the Tour de Suisse, which has been changed to the Tour of Georgia. Uh, the Georgia, the country, not Georgia, the state in the US. I don't know, it looked fun. That That's that's literally why I did it, because it looks fun. Um, nine stages, I think, yep. So I think we'll do that. In the next episode, we'll also have the national championships, and then to the Tour de France we go. I'm still not sure which variant I'll use, but don't worry, I'll figure it out. However, if you've come to enjoy this episode, then please do leave a like down below. If you're new to the channel and want to see more of this content going forward, then feel free to subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll catch you in the very, very near future. My name is Guillaume, have an amazing day. See ya.